Hi everyone, today we will be making this amazing artisan bread and it is super easy to make because it is a no knead recipe. That is right, there was no kneading involved in making this beautiful bread. And I'm going to be sharing with you some tips and tricks to make this bread, so stay with me. Now this bread works best if baked in a Dutch oven or a pot with a lid that is oven safe up to 450 degrees. And baking in a Dutch oven with the lid on creates a steamer effect, allowing the surface of the bread to crack and develop a nice crust with crispy edges. And the result is a beautiful artisan bread like the ones that you can buy in a bakery. But if you do not have a Dutch oven, no problem. You can recreate a steamy environment in your oven by baking your bread on a sheet tray with a pan of hot water underneath. And this bread only has four ingredients, so let me show you. Here are the four ingredients that you will need to make your delicious bread. Of course, the flour. I am using a bread flour, and bread flour has a higher amount of gluten-forming protein, which will create a chewier structure to the bread. Now, you can use all-purpose flour. All-purpose is just lower in protein, and it will create a delicate, finer crumb. Then you will also need two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of a dry active yeast, and one and a half cups of very warm water. To a large mixing bowl, I'm going to add three cups of flour. Then I'm going to add my yeast and my salt. I'm just gonna take a wooden spoon and stir this together. And now I'm going to begin adding my warm water, stirring with my spoon. And I can tell that this dough is a little dry. However, what is great about this recipe is if your dough is too dry, you can add more water. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna add some more water. You just want to get this dough to the right consistency. If it is too wet, you can always add a little flour. But this is looking good. The consistency should be uh, wet and sticky. So now I'm going to cover this with some plastic wrap and place it into a warm place for two hours until it doubles in volume. Once your dough has risen, you have a couple of options. You can bake it immediately, or the dough can be refrigerated for up to three days. And believe me, that is a nice thing when you can make your dough, put it in the refrigerator, and then bake it later. I will tell you that if you refrigerate your dough, make sure that you set it out at room temperature for 45 minutes to an hour before baking. And also, just to let you know, refrigeration gives time for your dough to develop better flavor. This is what your dough will look like after it has risen. And as you can see, it is wet and sticky and even a little bit jiggly, but that's okay. That's what you want. A loose and sticky dough is easier to rise and when baking at a high temperature, it gives that bread a great big rising boost, which helps to create those air pockets. Now I'm going to dump my dough onto a piece of parchment paper. But here's a little trick for you. You can sprinkle flour on your parchment paper, but I like to use nonstick spray. Let me tell you the reason. Because after you dump your dough on your paper, you're going to fold up the edges and create a seam. Well, that seam will need to be flipped over into the Dutch oven on another piece of parchment paper. So nonstick spray is, is less messy than flipping flour and creating a mess. Y'all feeling me? You got what I'm saying? So let me show you how to do this. Okay. 
Okay, so now I'm going to begin just lifting up the edges and folding it into itself just to make a, a nice circle. But don't, don't get hung up on trying to make it look perfect or anything. It is rustic. It's an artisan bread. It's all good. I have a second piece of parchment paper and I'm going to spray this with my nonstick spray. And then I'm going to flip this bread seam side down onto this piece of parchment paper. Doesn't have to be perfect, just like that. Ta -da. So this is my cast iron Dutch oven, and it has been preheating in my oven, and my oven is at 450 degrees because that is the temperature that we are going to bake this bread. So now I'm just going to remove this lid, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of steam. But that is what we want. And then I'm just simply going to lift this bread up and place it into the Dutch oven. Then I'm going to place the lid on. And I'm going to bake this for 30 minutes with the lid on, then remove the lid and bake it for an additional 12 minutes. Ooh. The bread is done. So now I'm going to lift it up out of this Dutch oven and place it onto a cooling rack. And I know it's hard, but you must let this bread cool for 10 minutes before you slice into it. Now I want to real quickly show you how to do this bread without using a Dutch oven because I know not all of you have one. I did the exact same thing. Uh, with my parchment paper, sprayed it, flipped it. Now I'm just going to lift it and put it onto a baking tray. Okay, in my oven on my bottom shelf, I have placed a pan and I'm going to pour some hot water into that pan. Then I'm going to place my bread over top of that pan of water and that's gonna create steam and give that bread a nice crust. So as you can see, I have two loaves of bread. Uh, one that I baked in a Dutch oven and one that I baked on a baking tray with a water bath underneath. They're very similar. Uh, they both have a nice crust on them. However, I think that you'll have better results using the Dutch oven, but I just wanted to show you that this bread can be baked without a Dutch oven. This bread is not only beautiful, it is delicious. It's gonna change your world, I'm telling you. You will want to try this. Dip this crusty, delicious bread in a bowl of soup and you have a home run. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful day. God bless and I will see you soon with more recipes.